Terry Vanner Heiden here. So you're just getting started in Lightroom Classic, and sometimes you'll come across things that maybe just don't make any sense. Rather than struggle with these concepts, let me show you the top three things I think you need to know when getting started in Lightroom Classic. These tips aren't in any particular order, and these are my top tips for the beginner trying to get into Adobe Lightroom Classic. First off, Adobe offers us a few different options when it comes to Lightroom. There's Lightroom Web, Lightroom, and then Lightroom Classic. On my channel here, I teach Lightroom Classic. Lightroom Classic can only be used on your computer, and I feel this program offers the most options. Many of the things you'll learn on my channel will transfer over to the other Lightroom versions, but to get the most out of Lightroom, I prefer to use Lightroom Classic. Now, number one, the first tip of Lightroom Classic is importing images properly. Be sure to save your images with your catalog. The process in Lightroom Classic is to import the images into Lightroom Classic, usually from a card straight out of your camera, and load them into a catalog. When done properly, the Lightroom catalog knows where your images are. Keeping in mind, the Lightroom catalog is a database of all your images. It references your images. To make a, a, a policy of importing your images into the same folder that your catalog resides will reduce the possibility of you losing your images later on. Take these steps to make sure you're importing correctly. When importing, Make sure of three things, where the images are coming from, how you're going to transfer them, and arguably the most important part of importing is where are those images gonna be saved. So let me show you. So we're in Lightroom Classic here, and you can see this catalog has no images, no photographs at all. So we're gonna to go to import. I have a card already put into the uh, card reader that I have attached to the computer. And we'll come over here and we'll see, we'll, we'll click on five of these images here of my dog. And of course, when you're importing, you can kind of look at the images you want and decide then if you want to import them. My policy generally is to just import the images and then later I'll remove them if I don't like them. So we see here from, where are they coming from? They're coming from the Nikon Z9 card that's already in the computer, in the card reader rather. Next, what are we gonna do with them? Copy, move, or add. I prefer to always use copy because I'm gonna copy them from the card onto my hard drive. And I don't want to move them because then they won't be on my card anymore. If you do that, sometimes you can lose your images. Uh, in the transfer, there could be some sort of a problem. And if you've removed them from your card, then you don't have any backup. So I'm kind of using this as a backup. So I always copy the images. And I don't bother using copy as DNG. I just copy them as raw files straight from my camera. Then I come over and say, okay, where are they going to go? And in this case, this defaults to the, to the uh, Macintosh hard drive. And that's not what I want to do. So I'll come down here to destination, click this little triangle. And here is the hard drive. See, a lot of times they'll put it right here in pictures inside your hard drive. And in this case, I don't want to do that. I have an additional drive hooked up to the computer, a little transfer drive, and that's called photos. So that's where I'm gonna put things. I'm gonna put things inside of that folder. So I have this clicked and I'm gonna put them into the test LRC. So if we look at the hierarchy here, as we go into the photos, you'll see I have a folder called test LRC. Now you can name your folder whatever you want. You could name it nature 2024, or you could name it family 2024, whatever you want to name, whatever kind of images you want to shoot and you like in its own catalog, that's where I put this folder. So as we click in here, we can see that I have the catalog is all set. All right. So I've built the catalog and left it in here in this folder, test LRC. So I double check. It's coming from my card. I'm copying them. And where are they going to go? They're going to go into the test LRC folder. Right down here, they're gonna go into that folder. So let's go ahead and do the import. It only takes a, just a minute or so for these to import. Now they're gonna build standard previews. And if you wanna find out more about importing, I have a more in-depth uh, 
video on it and I'll leave a link up here. So no, I'll leave a link up here so you can check that out if you want to go really in depth on importing. But this is kind of the, the, the most important parts of importing. It's, it's basically where they're coming from, what you're going to do with them, and where they're going to go. So these are all imported. Let's go back into our finder and take a look at what we have. Come in here, go to Photos, LRC, and you'll see what Lightroom did here. Lightroom made a folder for us, 2024, and inside of here is the date that those images were taken, and inside here are the five images of my dog. So those are all in to Lightroom, and we can see where that is. So what's nice, in this folder, the test LRC folder is my catalog, which is this item right here, LR Cat, Lightroom catalog, and then the, the folder that has the images in it. So I know that if I wanted to take this folder and drag it somewhere else, copy it, share it, I can just bring that to a totally different computer. If it has Lightroom, I can hook it up and actually go right in and start seeing my images and everything that I do to them will be in there. So those are the things you want to keep track of on tip number one, which is knowing how to import. So tip number two is picking favorite images. What's the best way? Let me show you how. So we've got a bunch of images here of my dog. We've got probably about, well, you can see the 19 here. We got 19 of them. So as we look through these, we can double click on them and go from right to left and see what we can find the ones that we like. So you can see down at the bottom, you're just scrolling through these images. So generally what I'll do is I'll pick an image that I might like. And then in order to pick that image, I hit the letter P and that gives it a little white flag. So I move on a little bit and maybe I'll pick this one, move on a little bit and I'll do another pick. There's his eyes are shut. He wasn't really going for this session today and pick. So now we've got, we go back to the grid mode and we can see here that we've got several flags that are listed here. So what I'll do is I'll come up here and I'll go attribute and I'll come up to the flags, right click and go flagged only. So these are the images that I flagged that I like. So let's go ahead and grab all those images. And now what I'm gonna do is make a quick collection. Now I have a video on how to make collections. I'll put that up there as well, but suffice it to say, we're gonna create a collection and we're just gonna go dog and we're gonna include the selected photos. And now we can see down here, we have five images in our, in our collection. So now what I'm gonna do is come up here, grab all of these, and I'm going to unflag them. So that's the U. So now they're unflagged, and we're gonna set this back the way it was, any flag status. And now we've got five of those 29 images are in this dog collection. So the catalog is everything, and there's 29 pictures in the catalog, but there's only five in this collection. Now I usually take it a step further to drill down just a little bit more, and I'll take the first two images, and I'll hit the letter C, which is a shortcut, or you can come over here and click this, which is the compare mode. And this will allow you to zoom up and compare, look for sharpness, compare them close, look at them side by side. You can decide how much of a zoom you want. This is it. Uh, uh, let's see, when we zoom this up, that's at 100%. Maybe we want to zoom that back. If you have images that aren't quite exactly the same, you can unclick this little lock and have the ability to move one independently from the other. But if you have it clicked, then they move together. So this is the way you can look and see. And what I'll do is I might say, okay, I like this one the best. And then I'm going to move this one. Oh, I don't care for that one as much. And you can see down here that the, I'm cruising along these five, right? So I click again and it goes to the next one. And let's say I like that one the best. So I'm going to flag that because remember I took off the flags and we can just highlight it and hit the letter P. And now when we come back, we can see that all of these images, this was my favorite. So that's the one that I picked. So that's an easy way to get around choosing, simply choosing your images and figuring out which ones you like the best. All right, tip number three is a question I get all the time. And that is when you're starting to do work on your image, let's say you're gonna go into the develop module and you wanna start doing some tweaking, like changing the exposure, like uh, changing the color, any of the things that you might want to do to the image, uh, all the way down from 
texture to clarity, any of these moves that you make, tone curve, color grading, any of these things, detail sharpening, these are all things and details that you're gonna be making on your image. The question I get all the time is once I've done this now, how do I save it? So let me show you how to save images in Lightroom. I just did it. So there is no saving inside of Lightroom. What happens is everything auto saves. So if we were to shut this down and open it back up, let's go ahead and do that. We'll shut that down. Go in the photos where this resides. Open it up. It's gonna come back to where we left off and any of the changes I made to any of my images will stay the same. So you don't have to do any saving inside of Lightroom. All you have to do is do the work and it saves it for you. Okay, that last one really wasn't much of a tip uh, because all you really have to do is do nothing and Lightroom saves it for you, which is great. Uh, there is, however, a tip that I do wanna give you and that's how to use virtual copies. Virtual copies in Lightroom Classic are a really fantastic way to experiment with your images and try different things without adding too much girth to your file and without uh, uh, ruining or you know having to go back and redo work as you go. So here's how this works. We take an image and we right click and we go down to create virtual copy. So a virtual copy is just that. It's virtually the same image, right? So if we wanna take this image and go into the develop module, and let's say we want to bring the exposure up, the highlights down, our shadows up. Let's say this is how we wanna do this. So it's great because now we can compare to our original and we can just do the compare mode that we just did and you can see the difference what it is that you're doing on your image, how you're comparing. You can use this in sharpening, you can use it in all kinds of different, any kind of aspect that you do, you make a change on your image and that's gonna to be to that virtual copy. But here's the thing that a lot of people don't get. In the virtual copies, people are thinking, wow, if I keep adding more images, it's gonna take up a ton of space. Well, it really doesn't. So let me, let me show you what's happening. I'm gonna delete this one real quick. We're going to remove, see, note, note this here, it says remove from Lightroom. So we're going to remove it from Lightroom. So we just have these 10 images. So let's go ahead and go back into the finder and take a look at something here. Those images, when we loaded them, there's some from 2023 and they go in their own folders as to when they were shot and then some from 2024. So as we look at this, if we go into this main folder here and we right click and get info to find out how big this file is, we can see that this is 627 megabytes. So let me go ahead and screen capture that so we can refer to that later. All right, so now let's go in here and let's make a, let's take every one of these and we'll go ahead and make virtual copies of all of them. Let's go ahead and make a virtual copy. So now you can see that instead of the 10 images we started with, we now have 20. Each one has its own virtual copy, and you can tell it's a virtual copy with this little triangle next to it. That way you know that that's a virtual copy and not an original file. So let's say, for instance, we wanted to do some work on this, whatever it is we wanted to do. We could do all of our work on the virtual copy and get to a point where we like it, do all of our experimentation, and then you could, let's for instance, let's go ahead and do that. We'll go into develop. And let's say we're gonna make this a little darker and we'll bring the highlights up and we'll bring the shadows up and we're gonna improve the saturation. Actually, maybe we'll bring the exposure up a little higher. So that's the way we like it. We go back in the grid mode. Now what we can do is we can just copy that information back onto this. And one of the ways to do that, you go into develop module and we can see that we've got this image here, we can easily take and highlight the first one and just hit the word sync. And what sync will do is bring up all these options for us to synchronize what we just did on that last one and go synchronize. And now when we look at these, they're identical because we took all the settings on our practice image and put them onto this image. 
So it's a really great way to go. Now, if we wanted to, we could go in and delete that image. But before we do this, let's go back into our finder and see how much extra space was added when we did all those virtual copies. So we doubled our library here, right? So let's go in and look at this and go into get info. And I'll do a little screen grab of this. And let's take a look at this real quick. Like, see our first one was 627 megabytes. We doubled everything and it only went up to 729 megabytes. So almost a hundred megabytes of information that we added to this when we added every, every single one had a new virtual image. So it does add a little bit of space to your, to your hard drive. It takes up a little bit of um, hard drive space, but it doesn't take up near as much as it would if you were just adding whole new files. So let me show you that real quick. Like if we go back into here and let's go ahead and select all of our virtual files. So we're just looking for the ones that have the little triangle down there. And we'll just hit delete. And you can see here, remove from Lightroom. That's what it's going to do. Re remove those. Now we're back to 10. We can see we're back to 10. Now let's go back and import. And let's import 10 images. So let's come in here. And we will just not import some of these of the dog. So we can get to 10. So we kind of compare apples to apples. And of course, these are all shot with the same camera, the Z9. So we have one, two, three, four, five. We have 10 that we're going to import. So let's go ahead and do the import. We're going to copy them. They're going to go into photos, going to be in the right folder. And let's go ahead and import. And now we go from 10 photographs to 20 photographs. So these are all full photographs. So all of these have been imported and the standard previews have been built. So we're all good to go. Let's go back into our finder here and let's right click and see how much space that took up. So we went from our original was 627 megabytes. Now we've gotten into 1.1 gigs. So that you can see it takes a lot more space when you add on, uh, when you actually import images, it takes a lot more space. So the fact that you're making, taking images and making virtual copies, it's a real simple process to practice and try different things and changing whatever it is you want to have. Here's something that's just a fun little reminder. So let's say these were the 10 images that we wanted and we wanted to delete those. We hit the delete button and now look what happens. Lightroom says, do you want to remove them from Lightroom? So that means that Lightroom's going to keep them on that hard drive if you want them, or do we want to delete them completely from the disk? So in this case, we're going to completely delete them from the disk. So let's go ahead and do that. So those are my most important tips that I think any beginner should know how to import, how to find their images, and the one bonus tip of how to use virtual copies, because that's a great tool to experiment your development with. There's a lot to learn in Lightroom Classic. I have quite a few videos that are available for you on this channel. So take a second, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Remember to hit the little bell icon and YouTube will remind you of my next video. Now, if you have any questions or comments about any of the content you see here or anywhere else on my channel, feel free to leave them in the comment section below because I read all of the comments and I respond as quickly as I can to all of them. If you'd like to get a hold of me directly with questions or suggestions, you can always email me at terry at imagelight.com and I'll respond that way. There's a couple ways if you really like this stuff, you'd like to support the channel, you can visit my digital product page where you can find Lightroom brush presets. And I also have a very popular photography book, Razor Sharp Nature Photography for Sale exclusively on the website. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check that out. I also do private classes if people want to do it. They can do Zoom or they can do them in person. So if you want to do that, go ahead and contact me by email, terry at imagelight.com, and I'll be happy to tell you how that all works out. Thanks for watching. See you next time.